All right, so today is our first digital painting class, and I'm just going to go over a couple of different programs that you can use um, in this class if you don't have access to a PC or Mac, if you're using a Chromebook, uh, a district Chromebook or a Chromebook that you own. Uh, these are programs that are free to every user and that you can use with any of the systems. The first one we're going to look at today is a program called Chrome Canvas. And I'm sure some of you are already familiar with this. If you've had one of my classes, you've seen me use this uh, numerous times. And all of these are images that um, um, I've created using Chrome Canvas. So a few of the basics about Chrome Canvas. Anytime we're talking about doing digital art, we're looking at ways that we can use um, digital brushes, um, uh, different types of um, stamps, shape tools, that sort of thing to create um, some type of image. And so the first program, again, we're looking at is Chrome Canvas. And one of the cool things about it is it has uh, a really neat feature called layers. On the top right-hand corner, you're going to see a little square on square image. Uh, that is their layers button. And so with that, you can open up the layers editor and you can click the little plus button and you can add additional layers. Now you can add several layers uh, and I believe the number of layers is going to be controlled by a, a set of different factors, but um, uh, maybe limited a little bit to um, your system as well. But in any event, we're going to start off with about four layers here, just so I can show you the general principle of layers. And that's what we're going to look at today is how we use the basic tools that are available to us uh, in this program. And then we're going to look at a, a second program in just a moment. All right. So now hopefully you've got your Chrome Canvas uh, application open. Um, you've either got it in a side-by-side -side window view or you have... Um, um, simply open it up and have me playing in the background so you can hear what I'm doing. All right. So there are four layers. The layer closest to the bottom is our bottom layer. And when we talk about layers, what we're looking at or what we're thinking of these of are um, clear pieces of plastic, if you will, laid one on top of each other. And if I draw on a piece of one of those clear pieces of plastic, I have uh, those clear pieces of plastic in order, so one thing will be on top of another, literally. And the same thing happens in the digital world. If you create something on layer 4, it's going to be on top of layer 3, which is going to be on top of layer 2, which is on top of layer 1. And so one of the ways you can use this principle is to uh, create uh, um, layers that you can either... Um, create sketches from that you develop or that you um, um, uh, work backwards from where you create an image and add color underneath. And so I'm going to select uh, this second layer. I always like to work with the second layer because it occurs to me layer, later uh, that I might want to do something on a layer beneath. And then if I started on one, it's just a pain to go in and add layers. So I generally start on layer two or three. I always know when I can add more layers on top. On the left side of the screen, we've got our uh, tool editor here, our, our toolbar. And so the very first thing you'll see is a black dot. And that black dot um, is the way we select color. Now, the initial palette comes up, and we have a range of approximately 24 colors to select for black, white, grays, and a basic uh, range of primary and secondary colors. If we click the custom color, it brings us to what we call the infinite color selector. Using the little bar across the bottom, I can pull the selector across the rainbow of selections here until I get a color I like. And then in that large field of color, I can go and select the specific color that I would like to use. And as I'm changing those, you can see that little circle changes to reflect what color I've selected. Remember that a pure color like purple, we call those hues. But when we start to add black and white to those hues, we get something called tints. If we add white to a color, we get tint. So that light purple or lavender is a tint of purple. If we add black to a color, we get a shade of that color. So these are all shades of that purple when we go into those dark realms. And so, um, 
We're going to look next at these these various tools over here on the left. You got a pencil tool, a pen tool, a marker tool, a pastel tool, and an eraser tool. And for each of those tools, we have a um, an adjustment that you can an adjustment uh, selection that you can uh, render for each of these different tools. And for each of them, the way that it it's represented here is going to be different. So, for instance, if we look how big the the largest we can get that pencil is going to be that size. The very smallest we can get that pencil is going to be that size. So, if I draw with that very smallest pencil, that's what I get. If I draw with that very largest pencil, this is what I get. It has an opacity. Uh, which determines how light or how dark, how transparent. It can be very transparent. And again, because it's transparent, if we go over that area over and over and over again, it layers over and builds up and becomes darker. So it's, it's very often very nice to work in a very transparent. We can turn the opacity up, and that's the most opaque that that pencil will get. If we look at the pen tool, however, though, we're looking at how opaque it gets. It gets very opaque. When we look... When we look at how we can change the size of it, we've got a very small pin. We can go to the very large pin. And just like the pencil, we can adjust the opacity. Oops, a little too low. We can adjust the opacity or how opaque or transparent the pin is. And just like the pencil, if we go over and over an area, it gets darker as well because we're laying over areas of pigment. So that's the pencil tool and the pin tool. We've got the marker tool. We can turn the marker tool all the way down and the opacity all the way up. And this is the little fine line. This is as fine a line as we can get. So you can put that next to that fine line of the pen and you can see exactly how much more detail you could get with that, uh, that pen um, than you could with that marker. If we turn the marker all the way up, whoop, we turn the marker all the way up, you'll see that we can get a very big, bold line. So if we want to color in large areas at one time, that's going to be the tool that we want to use. And same as the other tools, you can adjust the opacity of that tool. Last but not least, as far as the drawing tools go, is our chalk pastel or a uh, piece of chalk on a small, that's what it looks like when we turn it all the way up. Again, it gets really big, sort of like that marker. We can adjust the opacity again. It can go this opaque and just like before, we can still layer over and get it really dark, dark, dark. We can turn that down and we get a very light line. Again, if you turn it down too much, it gets a little too light. Last thing is the uh, eraser tool. And just like all the other tools, it has an adjustment as well. Now, it's not more opaque or less opaque, but you can adjust the size on it. And I can come back and erase everything I did. The other way I can get rid of stuff I did is using this undo button at the top left. The undo button will undo whatever it is you just did. And uh, there's a limit to that. Uh, I'm going to pretend like it's 10, <laughs> 10 things, the last 10 things you can erase. Uh, I don't know exactly the number. I can't remember on this application if it's 10 or 12, but it'll remember a certain number of steps backwards. Once you go too far, though, it's just going to quit remembering those. So you can only back up or undo so much. All right, so I've about got this all erased here, and I'm going to start back with a fresh. And we're going to look real quickly at how we can use those layers. So again, I'm on that second layer, and so the first thing I might do is turn that opacity down. And I'm going to, I mean, that size down, I'm going to turn the opacity down. And I'm going to select just a basic black over here, or something dark. All right. And so let's say that I wanted to do a, a sketch, and I've got a little... I've got a little, oh, a little too small there. Oh, what am I doing here? I had the same problem yesterday. Am I on the wrong layer? All right, let me back out and try this again. This is frustrating. This is the second time this application is locked up on me. There we go. Turn the opacity. All right. So as you can see, that's no fun. I don't know if you hear my dinging going off in the back, but that's my little email dinging. I've got all kinds of emails coming in. All right, so on my cup, I've, I mean, on my desk, I've got a little cup that I drink coffee out of, and I'm just going to do a basic little sketch. And so if I'm just kind of using this layer to do my initial sketch, and behind it I've got a tablet that's, that I draw on a little bit. Oh, and the tablet kind of goes back behind it a little bit. It's got a little, little surface it kind of rests on. And behind all that is a desk that this all sits on. 
And um, I've got my R2-D2. Uh, you cannot see him. I'm not going to put him in there. Uh, but there's a uh, a notepad here uh, next to the um, the cup. Anyway, so now I've got a basic sketch here. So what if I want to make it a little better? I'm going to come in and use my second layer to sort of clean up um, this design and really kind of um, make it more of the drawing I would I would like for it to be. And it's going to make me do this every time today. Oh, that's not going to be any fun. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw this line here. And I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to do this really cool uh, squiggly line sketch with this. And so I'm just going to use that background uh, sketch, that little quick sketch I did. And then I'm going to do this really neat um, squiggly line sketch. I like to do these every once in a while. All right. And then, so if I want to see, what does that look like without that first drawing? Oh, I did it on the wrong layer. Let me try that again. Here we go again. Probably not gonna, there we go. All right. One more time. So I'm doing my little squiggly drawing like I like to do. All right. And let's say I'm saying, okay, wait, well, let's say, what if I did a little, added a little value here on the, on the side of these things? Try to show just a little value in this first part of the drawing. And I'm going to add that background. And this is going to have a little value in it. And now as I develop this drawing, I kind of want to see what does this look like without that initial sketch that I did underneath of it. And maybe I've got some stuff written on this. And so now I'm ready to look at it. But I don't want to see my underneath sketch. So I can turn that off and look at what I've drawn over top. So I can go down underneath the layer below and maybe bring in a little color. I'm going to choose um, sort of a, I'm going to make it actually kind of a more of a cooler blue. I kind of like that. All right. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little color to this. Um, this mug. Now, because I chose the layer that's underneath, I get a, uh, my line drawing stays on top because layer three is on top of layer one and two. And so I'm going to color this in here and maybe this gets a little darker. I'm gonna, so I'm going to keep going over and over and over again because this is the inside of the cup. All right. All right. And I've got a little outside. So I'm going to come back. Oh, I don't like that. Undo that. Change my size here. And I'm going to come back here just to erase that just a little bit. And again, because I'm only doing the layer below, I didn't erase those squiggly lines that I like. Maybe I'm going to select another color and I'm going to bring in, uh, let's bring in sort of a, this green. I like the way this green kind of plays against that purple. So I'm going to bring that in here. Maybe I'm going to add that there. All right, and maybe I'm going to make my desk orange because um, that's going to be a color that really provides some contrast for all that other purple and green and fun stuff going on. All right, so that is Chrome Canvas. You can use it to do really basic, easy little sketches, come up with little drawings, that sort of thing. All right, Chrome Canvas. Do the background here so it looks better complete. All right. Now we're going to look at a second program. This one is called Sketchpad. And so one of the cool things about Sketchpad uh, is not only is it free and all online very much like that Chrome Canvas. And it also has the layers, the layer buttons on the top left over here. You've got the same sort of undo thing. You've got the undo history. That'll show you how many layers you can go back. On the left over here, we've got a plus button to create a new fo uh, file and open. If we've got stuff saved, we can look in that folder. If we want to export something, which means to maybe change the type of file it is and send it somewhere else, we can do that. Here we've got the settings for everything. If we have questions, we can refer to the user guide.
Over here at the top, these are my tools. These are the tool selector. And so if you look here, we can search and do a zoom for things in that area, in that space. We can crop and resize. We can select something if we want to move it around. We can do calligraphy. We've got a pixel fill, sort of like a bucket fill. Clip art we can choose from. Text we can add. And all kinds of cool shape buttons. When we're in one of the tool selectors, we can see all the different tools that are available under that uh, tool selector. So under the brush and the calligraphy, or the brush tool, calligraphy has been selected, but we've got a tile brush, a pencil, pen, paint brush, line, path, arrow, sketchy, eraser, mirror brush, calligraphy, streamer, crayon, stamp, spray paint, fur, web, and spirograph. Oh my goodness, that's a mouthful. So we're not going to go over each and every one of these tools today. That's kind of the point of the classes as we go through. We'll look at different days, how we look at different tools and how you might be able to use and implement them. A couple, though, I'd like to point out today. So the ways you might begin to start to integrate some of this sketch pad into your work is we're going to look at a couple of things that are unique. And the first one is path. If we set up a path, we can select two points. And then when we grab one of those points we can pull and change the curve that we've created and so i'm going to kind of play with this every time i select a new point it creates a new place where it'll curve to if you will and over here i will select them i'll pull that one there and so you can use this to create some really interesting curves very controlled curves and that sort of thing I got a student trying to get in. And so the next tool we're going to look at is, if I can pull it up here, excuse me, the sketchy tool. This is really cool. And you've got these little uh, areas in here. If I wanted to come in and draw some neat shadow stuff, I could come in and create. And you can see sort of what it does there as far as creating these neat lines cross hatch lines and so forth um, you can adjust the spread the line width and get all kinds of cool effects with it there's also the um, mirror brush this is one of the coolest brushes i'm gonna start a new file for this one uh, the undo top little left button here the uh, back left uh, back arrow will undo uh, i believe it's up to 20 steps something like that so with the mirror brush tool, you've got uh, the ability to change the sides, the number of sides, and, and the um, and the size of the of the line you're drawing with. And so I'm going with a single side. And the, what this allows me to do, um, oh, let me go back just a second, is and I'm going to turn this down just a hair. Is this allows me to. Um, draw symmetrically so say i want to draw a person's face and i'm doing a superhero character maybe this is the villain and uh, maybe he's got eyes that kind of do something strange like this and he's got little devilish eyes and by working in the symmetry tool or the mirror tool i can create things that are that are exactly symmetrical Let's see, and then maybe he's got uh, maybe some kind of cowling that comes around. And maybe he's got some type of bat ears. And let's give him a cape. And so I'm going to put some lines here for the cape. And so, you know, you can use that mirror tool in that way to create things that are symmetrical. Uh, even if I want to come in and do uh, like shadows here under the cheek areas, I put those shadows in it'll recreate them on both sides symmetrically. And so the next way we want to look at how to use the mirror tool is to look at how we can turn the, the number of sides up from one. And you can see as I turn it up what it does. It creates... Uh, sort of a spirograph look and, and we'll talk more about spirograph here in just a second and um you can create sort of like a mandala effect so i'm going to show you just real quick how you can create that mandala effect 
And again, if I draw anything into one area, it draws it exactly the same in all nine, I'm sorry, all 16 uh, little areas. And so um, you can create really interesting, cool patterns very quickly using that brush. The next one we're going to look at, and probably the last one before I uh, let my puppy out here. I don't know if you can hear. He's in the background there whining. All right. We're going to look at this spirograph. And so if you've never had a spirograph, go get one. They're absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm going to turn down my iteration so you can see what happens. So a spirograph allows you to draw with this really cool, unique um, way of making repeating lines. Now, they've got a spider web drawing tool. But as you can see, this sort of creates some of that sort of spider web uh, effect of its own. Um, so this is one of the coolest ones. Again, you can change the line width on it, make it thicker or thinner. You can change the the um, the overall size of the of the the brush tip, if you will. And then, um, if we got time here, I've got he's going to be quiet for a minute, maybe if we're lucky. I like to say this fur. This is kind of cool too. Let me undo some of this. And so fur lets you create, if you're uh, drawing something woolly, uh, fur lets you create uh, with cool lines like that. When we were younger, they had a um, way you could draw with little magnet shavings and it created similar types of line when you drew with it. Um, it obviously wasn't digital, but it worked sort of similar. Uh, the web... Uh, allows again to create draw like uh, drawn in the spider web. So if you create um, spaces for particularly, I like to do uh, comic book stuff, graphic novel things. <laughs> you you might have one of those dark spaces where things get kind of weird and creepy, you know. And so that's a really cool way of quickly drawing in um, the effects of spider webs. Um, <clears throat> the spray paint, of course, you know you can you you probably use this in other types of programs uh it's available in that um the um chrome canvas i believe is one of the no uh sorry sketchbook by autodesk if you've been using it it's got a cool and then last but not least where is it oh of course the most important one the eraser tool. And so one thing I want you to notice when you use the eraser tool, so you understand how the eraser tool works and so how all of these things work. When you select your uh, design to begin with, you can choose to have a transparency or you might have a layer of uh, of color and uh, or you can have different types of, here we'll go back and look at that, um, different types of um, Paper. So you can see they got blank, grid, loose leaf, tra but transparent uh, allows you to draw on a transparent piece of paper. If you've chosen just a blank piece of paper, now that paper is white. When you use that eraser tool, it's going to erase that white uh, that you've got down there as uh, just like if it's your, uh, you know, a layer of color in there as opposed to an actual piece of paper. Um, so if you want to draw something and and then layer put in a white background or have a white background you create that as a separate layer that you don't affect with your uh, eraser uh, you can also choose though paper like a blueprint paper a graph paper and these allow you to have uh, grid lines that if you're doing um, home designs or even creating um, cool artwork that uses very symmetrical designs uh, you can use these to kind of help uh, create spaces uh, and draw um, um, all kinds of. Oh, that's a crop tool. Oh. Let me get my shape tool here. There we go. I'm going to do a fill of a solid color. Oh. All right. And so you can design and draw uh, and create rooms and spaces and, uh, you know, anything you like as far as being able to 
to measure and control uh, the size and space of uh, what it is that you want to create. Uh, we use I use the similar uh, similar um, uh, method to create the um, Frank Stella work if you have the art class, seventh and eighth grade art class. All right. So any event, uh, this is the Sketchpad uh, 5.0. It works on the Chromebooks um, as well as uh, PC and Mac, I believe. All right. Have a good day. I look forward to seeing you back here again for the next little lesson.